Hey guys, Tim here. Today we're going to uh, wrap up the build of the Sugo SG-09. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is work on the hard drives. For the two and a half inch, there we can accept four, and they're in little brackets here that you have to unscrew. And for the three and a halfs, um, you unscrew this back plate. I actually won't be using this uh, on this build yet, um, but I will be using uh, three Kingston SSDs, and uh, the, this is just the VNow Plus series. Uh, I'm going to do three of them in a RAID Zero. Uh, this is just going to be um, like a little mobile uh, editing rig for me for for these videos, actually. So the first thing we're going to do is, and I'll do this off camera, but I'll show you guys what I'm going to do is there are two screws on each bracket, and there's brackets on the bottom and top. And then for the power supply, there's actually uh, two screws on the edge, and then this tray slides out. So I'm going to do that off camera, and I'll be back when it's all disassembled. Okay, so we've got it mostly disassembled here. And here's the bracket again, and it was on here, and I took off these two screws to pull off this bracket. A tip is on these bottom brackets, if you just barely loosen the screws, because of some extremely smart design by Silverstone with little notches in the brackets you can just slide this off and then you don't have to fully unscrew um, what are slightly hard to get to uh, screws but that's a, a great design thought there one thing to mention about installing the drives you should have got a supplemental um, instruction with this case if you bought it is that the two SSDs actually need to be together this direction so that you have room between the two drives. So they have to go face to face um, depending on of course the drive configuration but also opposing so that um, you know, there's a SATA there and a SATA there so that the cables don't conflict with each other when you uh, go to plug everything in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera real quick and I'll be back with an assembled piece. Okay guys so as you can see uh, we have the two discs in their little caddy here. The single disc is already installed. So I'm just going to slide this disc in here and I'll attach that off camera. Um, I may wait to attach this until I cable the single drive just since it'll be a lot easier to get to. Uh, the power supply is a little adapter bracket that comes out. There's just three screws you're going to put in and then this just slides um, down into um, a couple of uh, plastic rails should be good for uh, sound deadening and then screws back in with two little screws that came out of there and I wouldn't say you know with without the three and a half inch drives in here I would say there's definitely room, um, more room for cable management. Uh, this case is going to be pretty darn tight, however, if you put the three and a half inch drives in. Um, personally, I'm not going to at this point. I back up all my stuff uh, on a home server, so I don't really need, you know, terabytes of storage here. I'm going to do video editing here and then network them over um, to my redundant backup solution. Um, I would definitely, this this power supply, I've done an unboxing of this, but it's a, a mostly modular power supply. I mean, it's only going to come with, you know, it comes with an 8 pin, a 4 plus 4, and your 24 pin. Sorry, a 4, an 8, and a 20 plus 4. So, you know, this 4 pin might not be used, or this 8 pin might not be used, but you're only you know gonna have to hide one cable that's not being used with this kind of design so that's you know a little bit of you know, added space a little better airflow uh, one thing I really do like about this case an awful lot is that this is an intake fan on the top and you can see they actually jutted it out just a little bit over the back so you're gonna get cooling across the hard drives in the back but if you have no hard drives in the back 
And I may take this um, plate off. I haven't quite decided yet. I might leave it there just because there's not a huge reason to to uh, take it off, just for you know looks and maybe a little bit of air cooling. But you are going to get air, you know, across the back, especially if you remove this, across the back of the the CPU socket, which will actually help overclocking quite a bit. Um, one area on motherboards that's not cooled very well is the space between um, the back plate and the chassis. Uh, it tends to be a dead zone for air and gets extremely hot. Um, you know, you're cooling the front of the chip really nicely, but that chip does radiate, a, you know, down through the socket quite a bit. There's a lot of power going through that socket, so this should help quite a bit. We'll see. I'm going to do an overclocking video on this uh, this chassis when it's all said and done, and we'll uh, I'll do some cabling here. And I'll come back with the finished product. Um, one thing I've noticed that I'll show you guys later is uh, the logo is on the front for the power supply. Don't quite line up like I was hoping. So I might flip this power supply around. Um, we'll have to see. So we'll be back when it's all done. Okay, so finally done cabling this system. Um, it actually took me a little bit of time. Um, you know, after dealing with this case a little bit, uh, you know, I'm going to do like the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good is this is absolutely the smallest um, MATX uh, case that I know of. There might be a smaller one, but I, I don't know how you could make it any smaller, to be honest with you. Um, the footprint of this is extremely small. That's the good. The bad. Um, you you do pay some trade-offs with the size um, you know it's harder to wire one thing I can say you know it's harder to you know keep cables nicely routed there's no place to go behind for the 8 pin uh, you know just little things like that so the airflow is gonna be you know a little bit more restricted in this case of course with the size of the case it is gonna be a little more restricted anyways let's be honest guys also I don't know if you know you guys I took the front cover off and with the power supply I have which is not I'll be honest it's not one of the recommended ones by Silverstone which of course are all Silverstone power supplies it's not centered in the middle of this opening um, the OCD in me is gonna go insane um, what I probably will do is find some thicker um, filter material so that when I put the cover on that it'll be darker and you won't be able to I'll cover up the silver on the grill and then if this is darker like a thicker foam then you won't be able to see um, the power supply behind there uh, another bad feature the slot loading drive I mean still I did this you know in my unboxing Silverstone I mean, come on, man. You got to put a, a, the option to have um, a normal tray. Um, you know, it can still be a slim drive, but, you know, give us the option to buy a Blu-ray, you know, drive that isn't $400. Um, this would be a great media center PC for somebody that wanted to go to, like, LAN parties and stuff, too. Um, unfortunately, there's no way I could recommend that with the slot loading drive. And it's just, you know, it's kind of a shame, you know, the cheapest slot loading drive is about 60 bucks for a good one, which again, of course, is the Silverstone drive, but, you know, it's, it's a great slot loading drive, and I probably will buy one for this for editing and burning, um, but, you know, they, they definitely skewed toward wanting you to buy Silverstone components for this case, and I can't argue on some sides of the coin, because the Silverstone products just like Corsair products in my mind are like the cream of the cream they're always quality, they're always good um, I very rarely had bad encounters with either Silverstone or Corsair um, this case is extremely solid built, it is extremely well priced um, and that's really all I can say, you know, they just made some decisions based on components that they had um, that would work well in this case, I just wish that they had made it a little more compatible with everybody else's components as well. And then the ugly is um, my cabling. 
and the lack of cable tie downs uh, in this case. Of course, you know, there really is no place to put cable tie downs because every square inch is occupied with something. Um, so what I did was I just used this front little area uh, that has no... Um, there is a fan that sits here, unfortunately. It sits more like here. Um, it's an air penetrator fan. Uh, so as you can see, it's going to sit right on top of that bundle of wires. Um, and unfortunately, you know, some air is going to get in there, but not a ton. Um, I would recommend, you know, if you're going to overclock, I really would buy, you know, 92 millimeter um, drives, or I mean fans, and put them in here. Because then you get a little more airflow, especially if you put a graphics card in. I'm not going to put one in here right now. I will put one in in the future at some point. I'm kind of waiting to see, uh, you know, how the, the price wars go on NVIDIA versus uh, AMD right now. And this is just going to be used for rendering, so it's not, you know, right now I can live with CPU uh, rendering strictly. Um, it's, I don't do anything that's that intensive. But, you know, these two fans I think are going to be really important, especially if you overclock, which I'm going to do. So I will be at, you know, some point in the near future populating those two fans. Um, and then the back of the case here. Um, I wish there would be a little more space in the back. So I want to have this wired like this. and I'm going to make it work just because it's how I want it to be. Um, there will be a slight bow in the case right here, which won't be that apparent once I get everything screwed down. Um, but I didn't want to use two cables, and I didn't want to face these drives together just because it would be a nightmare to cable. Um, but, it, you know... I don't want to run another cable down here just for one drive if I can get away with, you know, I have three drives. If I put in a, a three and a half, I would have gone to there and then to here and just used two for this. Um, but for right now, I'm going to go with this. And at some point, you know, the nice thing about modular power supply, I can add that later if I want to. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, sorry for all the cuts in this video, guys. It's kind of the wrap-up video. I'm going to go ahead and put it all together and do um, a quick couple of beauty shots and this build will be done. Hey guys, there it is. Just so you uh, all don't think I broke the cardinal rule of building a system, I did power this on um, with the cover off. Uh, one last comment I have about this case is I found something small enough to poke through these holes so that I could switch the power supply switch on or off. Um, if you don't have something that can fit through those holes to hit it, make sure you turn it on before you close the case. Um, that's one of my complaints with this case is you can't get to that. It seems to me like the power supply in this case really is an afterthought. Um, it would have been nice to see them, you know, spend a little more time in designing where it sat. I think if it sat lower in the case, um, it would actually be a better design. Um, but, you know, that's just my personal opinion. All in all, I think if you want a micro ATX case, that is, you know, as small as humanly possible and, you know, looks pretty darn good. There's only one choice you can make, and that's the Sugo SG-09. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video series. If you like it, you know, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. It really does mean a lot to me. Um, let's me know I'm on the right track. And uh, thank you for watching. I've really enjoyed doing this build. I hope to bring you, uh, you know, a couple more in the near future. This is Tim for Timmy Tech TV. And I'll see you next time.